But uh, how have you guys been doing? Uh, good. 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 We're, we're moving along. I don't know if you saw the Helm Hub is officially migrating to the Artifact Hub. So that's the interesting thing for this project. So congrats, Matt. I think that's spectacular. Um, yeah. But otherwise, things are generally good, except I've got construction on my home uh, for the last couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to that being done. Uh, and, and we got enough rain here that uh, I think the lake behind my house went up an inch. Is there a uh, open issue on the Helm Hub becoming Artifact Hub? Yes, there is. And I'll pull that issue up here. We have a list of tasks we're doing as part of this and walking through the migration. Um, it is at, I dropped it into chat here. And so we should probably kick this off and that's the first item to talk about on the agenda. Great. All right, so here's the agenda. So this is the Tuesday, September 8th, 2020 uh, Artifact Hub call. I dropped the agenda in. And the first one is the Helm Hub to Artifact Hub status. Um, and the status of it is uh, the Artifact Hub now has um, all of the repositories that people have not already added themselves over, moved over. They are managed by the Helm organization and Artifact Hub. And a process has been put in place to allow transfers by claiming a repository. And so somebody can come along and actually claim one as their own uh, to take it back from us managing at the Helm org. Uh, on the Helm side, we have uh, already gone through all of our governance channels to approve this. And so now it's just a matter of executing on it. Uh, today, I was going to write up the documentation on the Helm Hub and start sharing it um, so people know about it. It's actually gone out to the mailing list already. And so that's where I'm at is, is uh, step two, clearly document uh, how Helm Hub repo owners can transfer and list the repositories and Artifact Hub. That's what I'm going to be working on today. Um, and then we know we've got to work out the uh, domain redirect. And I don't know whether at first we'll just do it through an app or whether we'll jump in and uh, have it be set up through DNS yet. Uh, that's something we still got to figure out. Uh, if it's a DNS, and which it'll eventually become, but in, in the first get-go with a DNS, we'll be filing a ticket with the CNCF to have that set up. Yeah, I just think this is all fantastic. Uh, and Scott has a uh, PR against Helm itself to um, fix a couple of things because hub.helm.sh is hard-coded in some places or as the default. And this will actually clean up the response to allow redirects in future Helm. And so that's there as well. Uh, so that's where we're at. Uh, several of these repositories uh, have issues in them. And so I've been getting spammed with notification emails about the issues in these repositories. Um, I think over the course of the weekend and maybe last Thursday and Friday, I think I ended up with like 175 of them, notifications. So I'm starting to go through and let people know they can claim them so they can get notified or clean up their issues, the repositories that have issues. <laughs> That's where I see Scott and Paul have joined. I was just kind of giving an update on where we stand in the migration. We don't have a set date on it yet, but uh, we're moving along with it. Did you all have anything you wanted to add? Nope. Just that the Zoom uh, link in the CNCF uh, calendar is wrong. Thank you. I will let Amy know to update that. Thank yeah. you. That's why we were a little bit late. Okay. Yeah, we were just chatting over in the other other uh, room, but uh, good to see you all. Good to see you too. I hope you had a quality conversation. Always. Yes. Uh, was there anything? Your uh, avatar, Dan. It's been a while. Yeah, nice to see you. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Matt. Yes. Or, yes, I did have one thing to 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 bring up. Yeah. 
I didn't put it on the agenda though, if that's okay. Um, with the, sure. uh, the issue about README links. Ah, um, yes. Comments, uh, both of your comments uh, there too, and, and you, Matt. So, I only have one question. And I, by the way, I agree. I think uh, it, it is a shame for readmes to have to have full URLs, but given that we you know, support sources from all different places and they have special rendering, it's just not feasible. Um, also, the option to package random files is also, like you said, it could open us up to being just weird, weird possible tax or just other strange things. Um, even extra large packages if need, you know, unnecessarily to. Um, the only thing I wanted to ask was about the, the, the source, uh, the source key you mentioned. I know we have a sources, but yeah. generally that, that's not really used for the, the source code for the chart itself for most current charts. It's used for, um, it's an array for like various sources, like for instance, even the upstream project or the, 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 uh, the container image source or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, yes, it, it is not specific just for the source code itself, but that's where you can put the source code for maybe the application, the chart. You can put any of those things in that array. It would be nice if it was yeah. a key value pair rather than just a list of URLs because that would make it easier to display, but it's not. We can't change that. No. But we could add something potentially. So anyway, I think that's outside yeah. of the scope of this because that's more of a Helm conversation, but uh, mm -hmm. it might be worth following up. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And it might even be something where like in a future version of the Helm spec, the like the chart spec, we even have the option to um, put like your images and icons and stuff in the chart itself. And that way, anything that wants to render stuff like images can actually, if they want, open that chart up and grab them out. But we yeah. need to figure out how that would look. So so my, my lazy man's route to that would probably, are you familiar with data URLs? You can take something like an image, convert it into a data URL and embed it because the image is actually embedded in the URL. Uh, that would be a possible way to do these things. I have not experimented much with it to see what changes would be required or how big files would get. Uh, mm -hmm. But that would be my, my short term easy method because it would require, I think, the fewest number of changes. It's a URL format, so these are URLs. Or even just a normal markdown image path, as long as it's a full, full, fully qualified, excuse me, a full URL, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, yeah. Anything would work as long as we're not expecting, you yeah. know, to reproduce all the special magic rendering that different, yeah, different yep. projects out there have like GitHub, et cetera. If I understand correctly, we probably don't want to build that into Artifact Hub, right? No. Uh, I wouldn't suggest right now. Uh, if we did, we'd have to take care for security and, and all that good stuff. Yeah. Keep it simple. Cool. Um, I'm just going to, just to round that one out, I'll, I'll send a note to the Helm Keybase chat where we're talking about the next blog post and just put that on our list maybe to try to include if we can. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, the next item in the agenda is actually something that came up the, earlier today. I was talking to, with Remus over at JFrog. And so the Helm incubator and stable repositories uh, are going to go away. Um, look, we're, we're, you know, figuring out if there's a way we could have an archive in case somebody does need to get to something and things of that nature. But JFrog Chart Center has a copy of all of the charts. Um, an incubator and stable, that's like about 900 megs, because charts are just small, right? It's a total of about 900 megs. But they have a copy of all of them that you can get through Chart Center. And so they are going to have that going forward, even after the stable and incubator repositories are gone. So that is one option we can start to tell people about. 
Um, but they've actually asked Artifact Hub, and there was an issue filed this morning on it, if there was a way to get the a list of the chart repos in programmatic form, because Chart Center would really like to know about any new repositories in order to add it to itself. And this is something we wouldn't just do for Chart Center because we wouldn't want to prioritize any one vendor, but it's something that could be a public API somebody could periodically hit to find out the repositories. Kind of reminded me of the catalog API on the distribution spec. Um, what do you all think about that? Um, Matt, I don't know if you've seen my reply on that issue. No, I but, Okay, but we already have an, in, an API endpoint for that. Oh, so, all right. Yeah, so I have... Yeah, I've commented on, on that one. Um, well, look at that, you're ahead of the game. That's great, I see. Okay, well that's all I had. Uh, does anybody else have anything else that Matt, I, I think you need to mute the for a second. I had kind of an open-ended um, question or a possible feature direction, but I, I would emphasize it, it's um, low priority and, and open-ended. So um, first is a question about Operator Hub, where um, it looks like they have 152 items in it. Um, and yet, uh, it, oh, and I guess we have 153. So I'm going to call that close enough not to, to worry about it when I turn off a, a category. Um, I, so I, I, but the, the open-ended question is around, um, would it possibly make sense to try and talk about operators without um, being specific as to OLM or KUDO or um, non-OLM, non-KUDO operators. And so um, essentially, is it, is it conceivable that you could have some metadata around a Helm chart um, or around an artifact more generally to be able to say, this is an operator? And I, I, it may just be that it's it's too uh, metaphysical a question. I, I was sort of envisioning that something that included a CRD would would count as an operator, but maybe you want to push back and say no, that's that's not necessarily the case. Um, but anyway, that was my uh, thought for you: is is would it make sense? Because I, I, I jumping ahead. One of the things that I loved about or love about Operator Hub is that five level, um, five different levels of becoming an operator, where the fifth one is like the super autopilot, and then there's ones uh, in between. But uh, I, I'm particularly interested in our ability to automate that, as opposed to just letting people click a box and say, "Oh, I'm I'm a fifth level one." Yeah, so, so this actually gets really hard. So in the TOC, in the SIG app delivery, they created an operator working group. And the operator working group dove into this. One of their ideas was to try to come up with a general piece of metadata uh, everybody could use. We weren't able to come to that. And then they talked about that whole, that five level thing you got into. And uh, they discussed it. Here and it is. It we, yeah. In chat. Yeah. And so they, they discussed it and they talked it. A lot of this was always oh, created in, in the marketing effort to talk about levels and things like that. And so they got into, and I'd have to dig it up their own version of levels. Um, that was different from this in some ways, and they could never quite get consensus or, or work it out uh, exactly what it meant and how you rate things. And it, there was just some difficulty around it. Um, so I like having something that gives you more information, but this was very much targeted at uh, the OLM based operator goals. Mm -hmm. And not all operators are that way. And so if we have a general thing, 
it probably needs to be evaluated. I don't know if we'd have the same things. I actually don't know because they weren't able to, they weren't able to publish something. Um, is this the kind of thing we should go try to figure out as a project since uh, the working group hasn't? I mean, it would certainly be better if the working group came up with the answer and we could just leverage what they had. It, it would. The working group is basically stalled and has been unable to produce. Uh, so this is something where somebody would have to go sit there and try to drive it uh, to get them going again. Matt, okay. I, wonder, I wonder if we could offer kind of the Helm packaging and sharing mechanisms for operators. And because I mean, we already have a lot of that stuff and it wouldn't be too hard to add. And then if we have a like operator.yaml as opposed to the chart.yaml that contains yeah. most of the metadata, we could in theory have a like a maturity yeah. setting where they would pick from the five levels or whatever um, that could be displayed. Yeah, uh, so, so this uh, gets into which projects would adopt it. Like how do you get right. OLM to adopt it? How do you get Kudo to adopt it? How do you have it as a, a generic thing that could be stuck in, if somebody's had a collection of say Kubernetes YAML files and adopt it, right? How would you get different groups to work together to adopt the same format? Uh, and that's one of the problems. The OLM folks have also talked about, they're moving to a new way to distribute things. It's a container-based thing. I'm not exactly sure how it works. Uh, they explained it to me in the last one of their meetings that I went to, but we didn't get into technical detail because they said it was so new, it was alpha or beta and I, it was so new that I had never heard of it and they had to point me to it. Um, right. And so they're looking to change things up there. But this, I like the idea of having something. I'm just not sure how to get the different so, players on the same page with it. Um, yeah, I, I had been under the assumption that we wouldn't require any changes from anybody and that we could just introspect their work. Yeah, uh, with the <laughs> levels though, how would we introspect their work to know the levels? Yeah. How about if we skip the level for a second and just ask operator Boolean true or false? We could, we could probably come up with a way to do that. What would it look like for Helm charts? So well, oh, go ahead. Oh, sorry. No, I was going to say that if you look at the bottom of the filters uh, on the left side, we have already an operator filter. At the moment, the mechanism is very simple. So all OLM operators are being flag. We have that flag enabled for them. And for Helm charts, the ones that have the operator word in the name are being flagged as operators as well. So it's just to do it a bit of, I mean, automatically without user have to, I mean, populate any metadata that actually doesn't exist on the chart JML. So it's simple, but it's adding some more operators to the equation. And now a user recently suggested this, that why, because we already have a custom metadata format for Artifact Hub. So the user was asking, why don't we allow to overwrite some of the values that we can't write at the moment in a chart JML file with some custom values from the metadata, from the Artifact Hub metadata file. And that could be another option. So the users, we just need to create that file and set the operator flag to true and we could overwrite them. And, and even in the short term, we could do something like an uh, annotation in the chart.yaml file that says something like operator true. Uh, we could start publicizing that as a pseudo thing. Kubernetes is known to use anna, uh, annotations, right? To do this kind of thing. We could do the same thing. What, what about using the, the chart types? Like we already have application and ah, library. We that's going to have, have implications. That'll have implications on Helm's ability to install things though. So we couldn't just do that without making a change to Helm. Well, what I was thinking of is the main use of it would be if the person is going to use it to template out the CRDs and then use it as the, like a dependency for their other charts, which is kind of one of the patterns we've talked about um, being a sort of an acceptable way for people to install operators using Helm anyway. So it might be an interesting way to explore that a little bit deeper. And worst case, it could be uh, just the CRDs directory, the chart.yaml, and it's kind of a packaged up operator.
We lost Matt, unfortunately. That would explain why he was being so quiet. <laughs> Scott, what do you think of that? It's a good idea. Um, I think, uh, you know, I, I, I t personally tend to lean toward um, keeping, bearing in mind that, you know, we all know we, that the, uh, the spec for, for Helm charts uh, are in a m more stable place than they have been before, you know, even, even more so. And we want to, you know, maintain, ensure that we maintain backwards compatibility and we don't, you know, mess things around, me mess around with things for users. I, I think that those seem like pretty good workarounds. Um, I do, like, I lean toward wanting to um, add additional metadata you know what I mean? For like a minor version so that we can, you know, in an upcoming minor version and think, really think through it so that we, because once we add it, we can't take it away, um, at least until the next major, you know? So um, if there is some good, you know, really good value for being a bit more structured, let's say in chart.yaml or whatever, that would be nice as well. Um, yeah, I, I, adding to that, I'd really like to adopt the Kubernetes style, like API, format, uh, which we're kind of there anyway. We just need to add the extra fields. Um, and that could be, um, I don't know if we could get away with it on the Helm 2 spec, but we could certainly get working on a Helm 3 spec if there's something breaking in there. Uh, like metadata name might be an issue, but that also might be something where we say, well, we already accept ha you having a name. If you have metadata name, then maybe we'll override it or something. Mm -hmm. um, we, yeah, we can exactly. figure that out. Yeah, um, that's what we've been doing with flags anyway. Right. With, yeah. So. Yeah. Because then we have access to, you know, a, like as soon as we have the metadata, then we can do labels, annotations, we can do a bunch of stuff. Yeah, that'd be really cool. Yeah, I think uh, pertaining to Artifact Hub, I think, you know, it can be a little bit more, um, you know, right now, if I understand correctly, Sergio is looking at that issue and you know, I followed it and I may comment on that at some point, but I think based on that and some of the other related issues that we've been talking about and you've already, you all have already worked on, you know, Cynthia has already worked on, um, the, I think the solution is to provide additional metadata, metadata files, optional metadata files that are artifact type specific and use those for things like overrides and whatever else. Um, that seems like a good strategy you know, at least for now. And the nice thing is Artifact Hub is, a, is a, you know, still pre-release. So um, you could still, you could add those things and then as, as they become available, uh, those same benefits become available, say for Helm packages, you could then just either sunset those or not worry about them anymore. Yeah, yeah exactly. So we're planning to work on that ticket soon. And so that feature will be available and we can stop flagging the operators in hell charts just by the name, instead of by the name, by using that metadata. And we can even go f a bit farther and start using like the capability level that Dan was mentioning before. So it's our own metadata file. We can allow there wherever we want. And it's a, a, already it's available to users and whenever they're up to it and they, they add it, we can leverage it and display it in Artifact Hub. Cool. I also, can I just, I, I'm going to have to um, get off in just a few moments too, possibly before Matt comes back. I'm not sure um, because I have a QCM meeting. But I'm, I'm back. Gonna... I'm back. Oh, cool. Hey. Uh, well, I'll still say this anyway because uh, it's still relevant. I just wanted to quickly say that um, to all of you, I really, I'm really impressed by how, you know, quickly the Artifact Hub project has come together and, you know, the value that it provides is so obvious, I think. Um, and it's basically just a, a clap to you all on a couple of minutes. Um, and I would, I would like, if I can, to contribute a little bit more. I'm not sure how much, but um, I just think it's a, a really great initiative. Thank you, Scott. Yeah, thanks so much for saying that, Scott. I, I'm also very excited about the progress. So maybe a takeaway for the Helm folks is we have a think about how we might add some fields to 
chocolate YAML or start working on a V3 or something? Um, uh, I would start with the annotations before we make anything. So that way it's backwards compatible where people are already using versions of Helm. There's enough right. people who don't upgrade quick enough and we'd want something that they could use. So I would start with that as our first stepping stone because that's so lo-fi. Yeah, so basically add a metadata dot annotations field and allow people to fill that out and just kind of follow the pattern that Kubernetes already has for doing annotations. Yeah. And, and Helm has annotations in the chart YAML file right now. Oh, it does? We were, it totally does. Oh, well. It totally does. That's why I'm saying. We could oh, literally just have yeah. an annotation in the chart YAML file that says something like operator true and that will yeah. work with all charts even in Helm V2. Absolutely. Ah, that's really cool. Uh, actually, the other thing that might help solve uh, the issue Scott was talking about earlier with relative links is we could have a, an annotation for uh, URL prefix. Oh, I had not thought of that. I really like that idea. It, it didn't even, yeah, that didn't cross my mind either, but that kind of satisfies the key value here. Uh, comment that you made earlier, Matt. Yeah. All right. So we will, since there's only two minutes left, we will take that away as home folks and propose some kind of uh, ideas using this and see what we can come up with. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, two right. last comments. Uh, we do want to try and get the kudo ones in here at, at some point um, and have them listed as an operator as well. Yes, I've actually reached out to the kudo folks on it. Um, and it's now a matter of we got to sit down and figure this out, but they totally want to. And I've already reached out to them. Uh, um. And then my, my last thought is that as the um, switch over from uh, Helm Hub to Artifact Hub occurs, seems like a good time to switch from a alpha to a beta label. Oh, that's tricky. I like it. That sounds good. Sounds good to me. <laughs> there's so just also the next couple weeks. Yeah, there's also somebody in the community who may be taking Artifact Hub and bundling it with their distribution to search the Helm, the repositories of stuff they've got in their distribution. Um, and so that would be probably useful for them to know too. Great. Okay. Thanks everyone for the call. Thanks everyone for coming. This was Thank great. You. Have a Thank wonderful you. time. All right. Thank bye. you. You too. Bye.